This is my bed with Radiator Charlie's uh, mortgage lifter. Last time I was joking about cutworms. Look at this. Something actually ate the entire stem. Be nice to your mother and always say please. Be loyal to friends and compost your enemies. Be nice to your mother. These leaves were just sticking out of the ground like they'd been held up. I've never seen that before. It was like something from underneath yanked the entire stem down into the ground. So it was just a little tuft of leaves sticking out. So right now on this bed, we have one, two, three, four remaining alive. One, two, three, and four deceased. And wait, also deceased. See this? Like it just left the shreds at the top, like it ate the entire stem. And what I saw first, I pulled this out of the ground, but what I saw first was a little tuft sticking out of the ground like that. And I said, what's that? It's just, it's like it got held up. But then I touched it, oh, it's just, it just leaves there. Like it was destroyed. So, all we have remaining in this bed now are one, two, three, four of the original 10 stations planted. So at this rate, we're not gonna have anything. The beds are doing that here too. Here's one, two, three, nothing, 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 four, five, nothing, nothing. So 50% mortality rate, nothing. Very tiny sick one that's going to die, so we'll say nothing. There's one, there's one, there's one, nothing. There's one, nothing, nothing. There's one. So, uh, this is pretty sad. Pantano Romanesco here. One, two, three, four, five, six, nothing, seven, eight. What is that? Now we're up to ten, but. Yeah, so my counting is off. I'll never do a Sesame Street video. This is not good, guys. Nothing. One, two, oh, yeah. nothing. Three, four, five, six, seven living in this bed. This one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven living. So we've got about a 50%, close to a 50% mortality rate on the seedlings, which is ridiculous because each one of them had three seeds planted in the hole. Bed number one, code name, Brian. Variety, mortgage lifter, mortality rate, 60%. Bed number two, code name, Rachel. Variety, chocolate pear tomato, mortality rate, 50%. Bed number three, code name, Linda. Variety, berry, crazy cherry, mortality rate, 40%. Bed number four, code name, Christy. Variety, Pantano Romanesco, mortality rate, 20%. Bed number five, code name, Stephanie. Variety, white tomasol. Mortality rate, 30%. Bed number six, code name, Jessica. Variety, Brad, Atomic Grace. Mortality rate, 50%. When you first met me, I was having a bad day. So I expected that we would have some difficulty with tomatoes. I didn't expect the insane mortality rate. Like, I planted this bed and this bed afterwards. This is Karen and the variety is carbon. There are 10 in here. There were 10 in here, 10 stations. So when I talk about mortality rate, I'm talking about like a station is completely wiped out. Three plants per station. So uh, when they come down to one, I still don't count it as a mortality rate until that station is completely empty. So I have one, two, three, four, 
five and six, still alive out of 10. 40% mortality rate on the carbon. This is Richard. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 30% mortality rate uh, on the lucid gem planted in the Richard bed. So this is insane. Like, I actually transplanted a couple of tomatoes from a station that had multiples that looked pretty good over here on the mortgage lifter. And when I did that, I noticed there were knots in the roots already, like nematode knots. So I've got cutworms, nematodes, random stuff chewing on the leaves, uh, and something maybe that's yanking them straight down into the ground, which might also be cutworm. I have no idea what the deal is. But um, it's, it's obvious that the direct seeding approach uh, is, is not working. So what I should probably do, what I'm thinking, is I should start them in flats first and get them about this big so they're outside of cutworm stage. And then I can put them out to die. After they've already gotten established and they look really good, I can put them into the death march and watch them die. See this tomato? This is why I'm thinking transplants might be the way to go. This tomato, this tomato, these guys here, this is in my seven-year-old's bed. I helped him plant these from transplants that we got from a local place. They were like, you know, quarter a transplant or something like that, US. And these are doing pretty good. I think this variety is called Heatmaster. Um, tropical red tomato and they are doing okay so you know it may be that they're more pest resistant disease resistant etc um, or it may just be my son is a better gardener than I am this is a grape hull I love this thing for clearing new ground because you could just kind of scrape over the surface this is the grape hull from Easy Digging. Greg over at Easy Digging used to uh, sponsor my website, but I, uh, I just kept his ad up and I never charged him again after a while because I just like the tools. And uh, I like being poor, I guess. But uh, anyhow, I was thinking about this whole thing with tomatoes and other vegetables. And the, the deal is tomatoes don't like it here. Nothing ever dies in the tropics, it seems like, like bug-wise. Nothing evil ever dies in the tropics. Your vegetables will all die, but the bugs don't die. And so what I think is happening here is we have a species that is just the most delicious thing in the world to bugs. And we're planting them and they're getting eaten like everything wants to eat them. We are not working with the climate, we are fighting it. We want to grow, I mean, I planted all those carrots I showed you the other day. A lot of those carrots came up and then disappeared. Something's eating the carrots too. I asked a farmer, what does he do? When, every time he digs a new bed, he scatters seven dust over the entire ground of the bed. So all the insects in there are toasted. Well, I don't really want to do that. It just seems wrong to get out the you know, the pesticides, but probably because we're working against nature, that's how you grow vegetables here. And that's really unfortunate. But on the other hand, you know, this citrus tree right here, this thing was sitting out here in the field covered with brush for a really long time, and it looks fine. It's actually going into bloom now. There are coconut palms. If you look back over here into my neighbor's yard, the beautiful coconut palm right there. Nobody has to do anything to take care of that coconut palm. Nobody has to do anything to take care of the mango that's underneath it there. Nobody has to do anything to take care of cinnamon. Even bananas are only a small amount of work. Breadfruit, bread nut, jackfruit, basically take care of themselves. People can walk away for a long period of time. They just come back with a machete and they clear all the brush off and they're right back in business. They just get the vines off the trees and the trees produce again. So, as much as I like gardening and doing vegetables, I'm going to keep experimenting with it. I'm not giving up. Uh, I think that it's an uphill battle. So, we'll see. 
I'm, I may just go ahead and do transplants for the tomato beds and then see what happens next because I'd really like to get some of these varieties to go. But looking at how just terribly sad these things are, these little tomato plants should be twice this size right now. You see, the leaves are Swiss cheese. And most of them look like this. This is absolutely pathetic. They've had good nutrition, they've had ashes. I even, I got a micronutrient solution. 20-20-20 with micronutrients, right? It's not organic, but I knew that they needed a pick-me-up and I said, you know what? I'm just gonna go get the micronutrient solution from the local ag store to make sure that if they're lacking selenium or whatever, they'll have it. Perked them up a little bit, but I don't think they're, I don't know. I don't know, we'll see if any of them pull through. Maybe the ones that pull through, we save the seeds and we get something that really works. But probably, they'll all die. And that's the way it goes sometimes. That's uh, why I like food forests, and I like fruit trees, and I like perennials. Interestingly enough, uh, the perennial vegetables that I planted are actually doing really well. We should go look at those. So you see these guys right here? This is Abelmaschus manahat, the edible leaf hibiscus. And in order to start it, you just cut pieces of stem and jam them into the ground. And so that's Abelmaschus manahat. And then over here, we have longevity spinach, Gynura procumbens, which again, all I did was stick little pieces in the ground. They look quite good. And they look better than most of the European type vegetables that I planted. Like look over here. These guys here are cauliflower. They were planted from transplants quite a while ago, a month ago or more. They look horrible. They are sick and ill and unhappy. And there used to be one over here. You know, there used to be one over here. Look at that thing, that's, that's what's left of it. This is what happens to them. They get all chewed to bits and they expire. And over here, in this section, you can see, look at that's kind of a sad looking kale. That is not happy. That's not what they're supposed to look like. Right in here, I had a bunch more. They're not there anymore. They died one by one. The ants killed them. And then bugs came and snipped their leaves off. This is pak choy, which is better adapted to this climate, more of a tropical vegetable. And this is the okra that I planted later. This okra is gonna way outrun the more cool climate vegetables, even though I got varieties of the cool climate vegetables that were supposed to do well here. I just think that everything wants to eat them, and if I don't come out here and blast them with poison or something, they're not gonna be happy. But what I'm learning is the vegetables that will actually thrive here, Talinum fruticosum, this stuff, this grows here, you know? Learn the stuff that actually goes with the climate by planting and planting and testing and planting and planting and then figuring out what lives. I may just have to go with a lot of tropical perennial vegetables and root crops and just say, well, I can't really do tomatoes unless uh, you know Everglades tomato does well here, which is in the future to try. So anyhow, this is how I actually wrote my book, Totally Crazy Easy Florida Gardening. I just planted stuff and planted stuff and planted stuff and then figured out which things lived and you figure out over time because you know lots of stuff dies on you and the stuff that doesn't die you say hey I'll try that again and you try it again and you try it again until it goes so the tomato trials are teaching me that it's insane to grow tomatoes here at least direct seeded so next we try with transplants and then after that we uh, we just probably completely give up maybe um, maybe pick another hobby maybe I'll go back to painting or something thanks for joining me until next time, may your thumbs always be green. You used to sit next to me in the third grade. You never paid attention to me then. You never paid attention to me. And you still don't pay attention to me. You're looking through me, right through me. It's like you're smashing up my my heart. It's so perfect, isn't it? It's like, it just makes you want to cry.